the girl had hooked up with this boy's friend at his birthday on his bed if you're dating and if you have a breakup make it a good breakup don't date guys that are like very yes papa yes papa high school breakups were so stupid he didn't know that women don't have nuts so he tried to kick me in the nuts comes to her house with his bodyguard's gun and he says usko bahar lao we're all dating the same guy in different font I feel like we've kind of started syncing with our audience because every time we record an episode and it's in our bank I go to the comments and people are commenting can we get this episode yeah. we share a bond we share a bond and we share one brain cell <laughs> collectively where all I don't know who has it right now because Nana and I do not one of y'all has that brain cell it's the only one keep it safe protect it and also protect your hearts because cuffing season is officially over and it is now the other season which is kalesh season kalesh season when you have a breakup and you have to move on it's a guttural pain it Dude. hurts like yeah. it physically hurts your body to feel the absence of comfort to feel the absence of love to feel just absence and then you're emotionally eating and everybody around you looks really really happy and you're so miserable and you're like when will this end and yeah yeah you genuinely feel lost right you feel the loss of a relationship and this person who you've shared like so much of your life with and like has become your a1 you know person for the last however many months years decades you all have dated is suddenly like sucked out of your life and there is a void and you mm-hmm. have to kind of like be like ah ha guys i'm fine when you're not really fine I don't talk to my friends on a daily basis. I talk to my partner on a daily basis. Now the partner is an ex-partner. So am I being disingenuous by messaging my friends every day? Am I asking for too much help? Right. Can I do this on my own? Yeah. Of course when you first break up it's these big 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 emotions, right? And then once you get over those and you kind of progress 6 8 months later it's like the little things. It's like you remember somebody liking like really chili sauce next to their food and you know you you make a mental note that oh i know this person would have yeah. really enjoyed this experience you really want to call that person and tell them like you should go here yeah, yeah. you should like this and you should do that but instead you mute them on instagram no also <laughs> It yeah. went from like deep. Yeah. High. It took me a second to be like, "Oh, okay, guys, we're back. The moping <laughs> is yeah, over. Yeah, the moping is done." It's yeah. like you fucking spend so much time learning information about another person, yeah. and then suddenly you don't need this. It's like a board exam, but the exam never comes. It's just like you have studied so much, yeah. and now it's. I I wish I could like go to my ex's. Get a new partner and give all my yeah. <laughs> notes like a, a tuition teacher. <laughs> yeah. Do you think an app like that would work where we could review people that we've dated? I don't think you should call it a review because that that would get so nasty so fast. Right. But I think maybe like somewhere where you can just submit information for whoever needs it. Likes, dislikes. Yeah. yeah. Like this person, you know, doesn't like sleeping without his socks on. So please keep his feet warm at night. You know? It's the little things. <laughs> What do you do with all this information? Can you imagine if like your partner's ex messaged you all this you'd be like block. Like I don't wish ill on my exes. For right? sure, yeah. Only if they talk to me, I have illness. <laughs> But like for I want them to be happy as they move on as they find yeah. new partners. I would like I would be willing to front that information to the next person. High school breakups were so stupid. Dude. <laughs> my first ever relationship which was a 20 day gig where we sent 20 sms's to each other <gasps> because that was our limit right yes. like uh, i had a 20 sms plan yeah. and that was the extent of our relationship we would like 
actively avoid each other in school and all and finally i use my 19th sms of the day to break up with him 20 <laughs> days later and dude wasn't having it okay so the next day he came to class extremely upset i was not in his class i was in another division but one of my friends was in his class and my dude in retaliation has pulled the chair out from under my friend as she was sitting and he said this is for what sakshi did to me you should feel the same pain what sakshi made me feel fucking crazy guy right and oh. After that, after school, I was like, I got to show up for my homie. So I went and I was like, hey, man, why are you pulling the chair from under my friend? And he looks at me in pain. Okay. And here's how much of a virgin he was. He didn't know that women don't have nuts. So he tried to kick me in the nuts as like his uh, biggest <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt her where it hurts and wow. I was like I think he was genuinely surprised that I didn't have nuts or something and he's to date known as the guy that tried to kick a girl's nuts dude oh my god unlocking so one of my friends was dating this guy who was such a loser <laughs> like I can't even he told her like she was trying to break up with him and he told her that uh, I have gotten heart surgery so I'm going to be out of school for a few days. Comes back with a band-aid. Two band-aids on his like left chest. Come on. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm in like recovery right now. I'm like, who? Even I don't fucking believe this. And I'm the most gullible person in the world. And a fucking a set of my friends, bro, they ran away. Like, what? Everyone's so jobless. They went to a mandir and took feras. Oh my god. And then they broke up and her boyfriend, her ex at that point of time, and I used to share the same bus. So one day he comes to the bus, really emotional, with a box. And the box is filled with all the memories between them. <laughs> and he sits and he sh takes 45 minutes my bus ride. I have gone through all their memories. She's drawn their children on a piece of paper. This is Ayan. This is Amira. This is Kazan. This is a, he's like, this is a rock she once kissed and I kept it. This is a tissue that she had a nosebleed and she bled into and I kept it. And I'm not even fucking lying and making this up. This is all real. My friend was dating the football captain at a school that's not very good at football, okay? But there was this, some inter-ICSE tournament. She had broken up with this guy the day before. This dude, ninth grader, has sat in the sportser's cabin and said, if she doesn't take me back, I'm not playing this MSSA tournament. <laughs> and the whole school's like, come on, you have to take him back. Like, we're not we're not a school that cares about football. Nobody fucking cares but about break up kaise kar diya? <laughs> He was like, I won't play, I won't play. Eventually, he played and she did not take him back. He was just trying to do a fake out, bro. Do you think that you need to stay friends with your ex? I don't believe that you can stay friends with your ex. I think it gets in the way of, first of all, moving on. How can you move on when you're talking to this person every day? It's codependency for sure. How is the person you date after just supposed to be chill with, like, you being in touch with someone that you dated for so long, you all were in love, presumably. <laughs> it's just not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair enough I t for earlier I used to be like in a thing that like I need to be friends with my ex but then I think I just didn't I wasn't that much in love with the people that I dated <laughs> because I was very, it was really easy to be friends with them and then I, I broke up with someone that I was really damn into and, like, and I'm like oh this is very hard what do I do and I don't know how to clear my phone storage because I'm like but this is a sentimental moment of my life but I also don't want to look at it because it makes me sad oh I, I don't, I delete, like, I delete everything as soon as the breakup is final. Yeah. I'm just like, delete, delete, delete. Like, I, if Galti say, you know, I get a Snapchat memory from six years ago when I was dating someone. I go into Snapchat and I delete it. I'm like, fuck this. My first stress after a relationship ends is like, what is that dude gonna do with the saucy photos? <laughs> Dude, that's, Dude. that's uh, like, that's a legitimate concern. Yeah. yeah. No, I I trust that all my exes have deleted them. 
I think the one ex that I don't think has deleted it has a picture of of me since from when I was seventeen because we were both seventeen at the time, and uh, see ya in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. When you are moving on, uh, be careful with who you have in your corner to take advice from. Like I always find that like generally like. women do end up having a better system of like support there is some logic to the advice that they get men i feel really bad for you you go to your guy friends and they're like just get fucked up bro like just get just a drink bro tinder, just download tinder download bumble she yeah. wasn't worth it she was a 2 on 10 you know that is not advice your friend is hurting yeah. he's put his like full feel this guy who cannot communicate his feelings has told this woman everything she cuddles him he's the little spoon and now you're expecting him to get over the first person he was intimate with by doing shots and like hooking up with somebody off tinder like that's never going to happen It's it's such a movie thing to do, right? Like these guys have never sat and thought about what is the thing to do. They've just watched some fucking bro movie, and they're like, "Yeah, he's back on the market." Like, <laughs> I feel calm bad down. Yeah. because by the sixth drink, you know that dude's gonna cry. He's gonna call his ex and be like, "Baby, I miss <laughs> you. Please." Yeah. So I mean, like, fu- I I just like I feel like. Just Google it. There's a lot of like ways to support your friend when they're going through a breakup, other than down the shot and tell her to fuck off. Like the, your heart's not going to be mended the next day. And rebounds. Be careful of who you rebound with. You don't want to ache yourself out. That's true. But well, what do you think about rebounds? Do you think they're effective? Do you think they're not? I don't think rebounds are effective. I don't even think like drunk calling your ex is effective. I think silence is the most effective. Like just be quiet. <laughs> go against all your natural instincts and just shut up. Go paint, go hike, <laughs> go do something else. I'm not even kidding. Do something else. You will cringe. You will cringe. Here's the thing. If you do the opposite. I don't think these people that break up are actively trying to drunk call right who is in actively trying to drunk call you get drunk and then you're like oh i miss her it's so logical that i should call her like i i'm not saying it's a good thing i think you should resist the urge to drunk call but the i don't think they think <laughs> when they're calling someone drunk right that's the whole thing toot my i was going through a breakup when i was supposed to be on a fitness like regime Dude. i couldn't emotionally eat i could i was off alcohol off sugar off carbs and i'm just sitting there eating boiled vegetables you done this on level 100 huh? on level 100 i was like i should get a price that's why i can't work out anymore every time i work out I f- i'm like i feel You're a depression <laughs> My PTSD just endorphins. No, <laughs> just PTSD from working. Yeah, out. I'm like I was so depressed when I was done. But like the post breakup body usually is insane. Like if just channel that energy and go to the gym, like and you fucking come out with six packs, dude. Most of the time, when you do build that body, you're fantasizing about some like prince on the other end or some like gorgeous like. um you know victoria secret yeah. model and then you get drunk with your friends and you go out and you rebound with some random person who then you have to make small talk with and follow on instagram <laughs> You would never follow a rebound on Instagram, dude. That's how your ex finds out. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Oh, I don't know how the internet works, obviously. Yeah. Dude, I had to once lie to a guy that I like hooked up with someone else so he would leave me alone and i said some random name knowing that i don't know anyone with that name because he was just like hounding me for a name and he just went on to the instagram search bar and typed that first name that he knew and the first five guys that came up he messaged them did you hook up with sakshi shivdasani at bsc juhu <laughs> on wednesday at 8 pm and all these guys just like they're out there probably still with this dm from this random that i've blocked everywhere and 
I'm sure in their circles they're like, oh, you know that Instagram influencer Sakshi, someone I'd message, I'm, and it just icks me out knowing that that exists somewhere. There is no perfect closure conversation. You will never get closure, dude. Closure doesn't exist. Closure but like, exist. I feel like closure is just code for I need to go fuck my ex right now. Like I'm going over for closure. Then why are your legs shaved? <laughs> And if your legs aren't shaved, I'll shave them. You know, respect. No, you're no, like, you're still going to fuck him if you're going over for closure. So just shave them. All I want to hear, all I want to hear in a breakup, is the person turning around and being passionate and being like, "No, but it's you. But we'll fix it. Don't worry. It'll all happen." But you don't get that conversation. Dude, honestly, I think the goalpost shifts. If they say like you were right, like you know everything, like we we'll fix this, then you're like, no, I want you to fight. Like I want you to argue. No, because argue. I want you to say that you were right when we were in the relationship. Right. When I was like echoing like over and yeah. over again that I'm having this issue. That's the point when you're screaming into the void. Yeah, yeah, you know, actually, maybe you're right. Maybe we should go for couples therapy. No I'm kidding. Um. It's not when you've reached a point where the breakup has happened, and then the person turns around and says, "You were right, bro. That ship has sailed." Unless you're the couple that does the on again, off again thing, a break or a breakup is already too late. Hmm. Like there's no working it out for me. I feel like I have never threatened a breakup in my life. Like hmm. if I say it's time. It's over. Like there's nothing you can say to me, and I'm a very like, like, like I said, I coast, right? So when I switch off, it's a conscious decision, and then like you just whatever happens, I'll be like, it's over. Hmm. Like I won't allow myself to feel that. I guess that's ego, right? Like I feel like there is a bit of uh, ego. There's nothing wrong with having ego. Yeah, I, I feel like good thing. women are not selfish enough. Yeah, like you're not taught to uh, like put self preserve. First, yeah, yeah, put yourself first. Like you've already dealt with a lot of shit before. You're like, listen, it's reaching my fucking skull at this yeah. point, and then it's done. Yeah, dude, I know this one girl. She got married in 2022, and and the guy was an NRI or something. And she's recently come back. And when she was getting married, her parents were like, "Listen, you need to at all points have like." an exit strategy we know you're in love we know all of that but just please have an exit strategy she had like property in her name and all and she wanted to make it joint property and like like the parents were like we're not going to give you all the gold that we have for you now just let's wait for 5 10 years and she like fought with her parents she was like why are you setting me up like why don't you believe that i'm in love blah 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 she's back 2 years later and the first thing she's like is you know y'all were right like i'm glad like he doesn't have like we don't have joint paperwork on property that i bought myself and all and i think like as women like you ask any woman through history she will say you need to have a exit strategy yeah. like as callous as it sounds i feel like you just need to look out for yourself it could literally be as small as tomorrow if this ends i have a job that will take me back even if i become a stay at home wife even if i've done all of that like the moment it ends i have a particular set of skills where i will be able to get a job that will be able to sustain my life i feel like that is enough of an exit strategy like you know it's like financial independence is a huge decider in how your life is going like you know like you should never feel like you're in a position where like don't get comfortable don't get comfortable. don't get comfortable like i know it's kind of sociopathic to be like always have yeah. one, one eye, eye open yeah one eye open like, but just keep it open you never know a lot of the times we underestimate our parents and how they'll react to like so breakups yeah. where you're like oh i've taken the effort to make my like boyfriend fiance whatever whatever meet my parents so now i cannot back out it's too late mm -hmm. but like your parents are also humans like they're not just authority your figures. parents are adults who've lived full lives before yeah. you came into their life they've seen everything no matter how prudish you think your parents are seeming right now you're like unko to samajh nahi aayega bro 
everyone everyone in their generation yeah. catch them drunk they'll tell you 50 stories For about sure. their friends like I'm not even kidding like oh um, Rishabh uncle like what <laughs> like oh like you know <laughs> Rishabh uncle yeah. how young is he yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know but yeah it's the thing like really okay somebody might push back and be like no but you guys come from more like liberal families you know yeah. it's an easier conversation to have but I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with the kind of like um like uh, points your parents are looking at for you when they're yeah. looking for your partner right there's nothing wrong with having somebody who can give you financial security there's nothing wrong with vetting somebody's parents because you're going to have to spend that much time right. with the parents yeah. as you're going to have with the son yeah so there are a lot of qualities like that that are perfectly correct and justified i just think that parents don't operate from fear and they don't know how to communicate with you what they want for you and what they want for you is what's best for you yeah that's about it but somewhere along the line like that communication gets really weird yeah and you know if there's a core incompatibility like i know a lot of like in my parents generation a lot of people probably didn't want kids but that was just like the norm back then so they had kids and yeah. like whatever they performed their duty but like if you're in a relationship and your partner wants kids and you don't want kids or vice versa i feel like it takes a certain level of maturity to like step back and be like you know it's going to be a problem if not today in 2 years if not today if not in 2 years in 5 years so i feel like it's very strong of people to kind of know that they want what they want and walk out when they don't get it like i 100%. think that's 100% like if your yeah. parents know you're in a relationship with somebody i think you should always tell them exactly what it is all the insecurities you're feeling or the securities you're feeling and don't paint your partner up to be bigger than they are yeah. like don't make excuses for that person for that person don't give them the cheat sheet of how to impress your family let them do it on their own because that is what's going to show you how much effort that person is going to make for you yeah you know i feel like we we are just so conditioned in to like lie to our parents to make them hear what they want to hear yeah. and it's it, it is difficult dude like trust me L- my parents when i was a teenager are very different from when they are, what they are now so as a teenager i would never tell them like the honest truth about even where when i was going, hanging out who yeah you were hanging out with but yeah. like now if you tell my like i tell my parents about the guy i'm dating or anything they're like okay you know what this is like you know there's no there's no red flags here whatever like i trust your judgment when it comes to this or like if i tell them like oh this dude's like a serial killer obviously like but if if i'm just like oh no he just has a lot of victims he's not a serial killer like yeah. like i got to be honest with them to get honest advice right Bad, like yeah. i'm sorry mom but as a daughter you will always date one person to get over your mommy issues and when that breakup happens you will realize that you are literally living all the fears of your mom through that breakup i just like remember having that one defining relationship where i was like working overtime chugging 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 and when i broke up i'm like fuck oh shit oh shit i was like being my mom i was trying to mother this person exactly the way my mom has mothered me and i see that even not even in romantic relationships in friendships in work relationships i always tend end up picking up more of the weight than i need to and i would never see it in a romantic relationship but the minute it switched to professional where there were no feelings involved i'm like why am i doing this for you that's on uh, you know my <laughs> thing is like no yeah. I, i i was literally thinking the same thing because I don't take shit from my parents okay yeah. like if they say something that pisses me off we get into it and that's fine I feel like if you wouldn't take that shit from your parents and you're taking that shit from a partner or that's someone else's L on you. parents yeah guts. guts something that you would have literally fought your dad on you're going to take from some random fucking stranger that's not even like interesting yeah who's yeah. not even paid for your education <laughs> yeah what the fuck come on come on who didn't even send you to the us for your bachelor's degree you're going to take shit from me <laughs> 100% <laughs> who didn't even buy you an iphone in the 7th grade <laughs> that you broke within the month that you kept in your school bus <laughs> Hundred percent, dude. I I got into a fight with my sister once because like the guy that she was dating, his mom was a fucking grade A controlling. 
bitch <laughs> and i was like dude you fight with our parents and they tell you like anything and you're going to take shit from this random guy's mother you're not even married you're like not even 20 years old what are you doing and then she was like you know what you're right i will take shit not from my parents but not from this auntie either yeah that's growth in my eyes yeah. for sure and that really brings me to the point that you have to try and either put yourself on a pedestal or remove everyone else from the pedestals you put them oh, on. Sure. Ask it's yourself. Rug pull yeah. <laughs> ki what what do you want? What's important for you? And that will keep changing every five years. Like yeah, right now. Years. Yeah, I mean, it'll keep changing, dude. And yeah. um, you need to keep reassessing. Not every person you date will be the person you have to end up with. And you have to be okay with that. If that person and you dated for like a long time like two years three years and at the end of it you're like okay no it didn't serve the purpose that's okay you did the exploration that you had to do there is no transaction no, here yeah. ab, usne to mere teen saal kaate mere saath, and all women will come to be like i'm so crazy i'm so psychotic i have so many issues i have so much going i'm so wrong all the time and like you know he's putting up with me he's not putting up with that yeah, much come you're on. putting up with as much as he's putting up with. and you have taken the extra effort to gaslight yourself, you're, yourself like also. you're crazy yeah but you're not you're literally not you're you're chilling you're fine yeah so there's no transaction here that Acha, he's dealt with my crazy so now he has to be the prince of my life if he is not holding yeah. a job and he is not proactive in your family gatherings Come on. Yeah. it's okay yeah it's like, fine relax, relax. Yeah. you're going and fucking asking his mom what dessert she likes and he's like <laughs> checked out at a family function yeah acting like the damas like, that really irritates me i'm like dude if i'm going to somebody's house i'm going to impress the shit out of their parents because yeah. i understand how important it is to be a representative of that person yeah. they should their parents should feel good ki mere bete ne kuch acha kiya that's true ye nahi hona chahiye i go i bring him to my house my parents are like ye kaun si game chal rahi hai saap si <laughs> just like <laughs> they're like trust me he's really nice trust me trust don't trust me mom just tell me how it is i buy random items from amazon with a one star rating please don't trust me don't mom. trust me mom don't trust me dude you know i was reading somewhere that gen z men are way more conservative than millennial men and it's like Millennial men are not that liberal. So how conservative are Gen Z men? I honestly chalk it up to the algorithm. I think it is the algorithm. I'm convinced because I have read two articles to, wow. to corroborate my views. The thing is that when, when women look for self-help or any kind of thing on the internet, the internet will take them to like self-help yeah. pages. When men type anything of vulnerability into their Instagram slowly but surely your, your yeah your social media is going to take you to incel pages yeah. it's going to take you to uh like hate content misogynistic content and you will not even realize that if you engage with that content even if it's saying that no i don't like this instagram or whichever social media will perceive that you have liked engaging with it and they will keep pushing it onto you and you won't yeah. even realize you're subconsciously like scrolling through your instagram eight hours a day and by the end of it like you are a misogynist we've gotten a little too deep in this episode but you know that's what breakups are deeply deeply gutting yeah i think we tried to stick by like keeping it light and fun we and then got, our own feelings just like overpowered everything we've got ptsd guys we're using that very casually okay. have you ever like been in a group of friends like your your boyfriend's friends and you're you meet them and you're like fuck i picked the wrong one dude <laughs> no <laughs> you should see my boyfriend's <laughs> friend that's true that's true there's this one guy I know actually Chalo let's let's bring in guys that have been broken up with by girls that were shitty because we believe in equality <laughs> this one guy was dating this girl and it was his birthday party and she was hanging out with some mutual friend and my boyfriend comes to me and goes like these two are gonna fuck tonight so I was like oh the birthday boy and his girlfriend and he says no no <laughs> the birthday boy's friend and his girlfriend and I'm telling my boyfriend you're fucking trashed. You need to cut this out. It's embarrassing. Blah, blah, blah. Cut to two months later. The girl had hooked up with this 
boy's friend at his birthday on his bed and nobody knew to that i would say the only thing i absorbed from that is that men are perceptive so why do you yeah. act dumb when i ask you for a very basic thing Dude, facts, you figured yeah. this out that that chick is going to hook up with that guy but you don't know that <laughs> eggs are over and you have to call them the next day otherwise there will be no <laughs> breakfast guts guts audacity and guts yeah i've taken lots of else everyone knows that i feel at this point oh I, really yeah. man <laughs> uh i've always had a feeling maybe it's a millennial thing or maybe it's a me thing that when i enter a relationship that i'm trapped in that relationship you know i'm like fuck my life is over i'm like bhal kaise niklungi i'm like why am i looking for an exit strategy i'm always like oh my god now i've said i love him yeah now what i'm stuck <laughs> And there's it's no one over. holding me there or anything. It's just the weight of your ancestors, bro. I swear, they really um there there was a time when there was a pressure to like date Kashmiri. <laughs> oh, not by my parents. They were like, just don't you. do it. <laughs> just no, but they, but like extended circles. And whenever I meet another like Kashmiri girl, first they're disappointed by how un-Kashmiri I am. and then they're like we're looking for a kashmiri guy and i'm like why <laughs> why like what's the scene what's the scene like i am um, yeah i don't get it i don't get when you are, when people ask you to marry within your community or date within your community me neither yeah uh, you make the best babies when you go like inter ethnic <laughs> dude you know i will say if i marry a sindhi being a sindhi that kid is going to have the hugest nose <laughs> yeah. that anyone has ever seen right like yeah why would i want to put a child through that yeah like i truly believe that i will have to start saving for his uni and his nose job at the same time it's true what do you think of people that break up with their partners because families won't agree let's go let's do it more people should do it i feel. break up break up really i yeah. think i think it just shows that like i feel like if someone breaks up with me because their family won't agree they're just spineless one second if you've been leading somebody on and you've been yeah. keeping them in a like a relationship knowing full well that your family won't agree you're a dumbass okay yeah but if your parents have always been in the know and they don't really like the person for you i think it's the right thing to do to give that weight depending on what your relationship is with your family if you really care about your family then you are never going to be able to choose between one and the other and you're always going to live a life of stress right yeah and the girls not going to be happy or the guy is not going to be happy yeah. you know it comes up a lot in business families when the guy has joined the business then he's like oh but if i go against my family i suddenly don't have a job yeah. so a uh, toodles yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's what like you need to like you need to really date with some strategy and if you're dating and if you have a breakup make it a good breakup kuch to seekhna kuch to seekh milni chahiye usse like if that person spent so much time in your life and you've come out of me like yeah okay next one you haven't done yourself a service either you haven't loved hard enough or you are in deep delusion because you should feel like shit out of the after a breakup yeah and that goes with anything if you are at a job and you quit the job and you feel like shit that job made some impact in your life same with friendship if you don't feel bad after talking to somebody that person was never your friend <laughs> that's honestly fair but you know what my biggest learning from a breakup has been what don't date guys that are like very yes papa yes papa mm-hmm. like you always what a unique learning <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie animal <laughs> <laughs> no like you know I'll tell you if the guy you're dating doesn't have daddy issues <laughs> ATB what is ATB all the best oh, <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> you're a warrior mm-hmm. your god's uh, strongest subject because only you can deal with it he's giving you the hardest battles yeah i mean look at how much character development has happened from you being in conflict with your parents for sure imagine someone who was coddled their whole life their parents were like tum bas you know you are the gem on this earth tum kuch galat nahi kar sakte bro that child is stunted <laughs> and that child is 
too confident when they shouldn't be they shouldn't be yeah. and here's the thing the kicker is that that kid does not know what hard work means no so when you're like work hard for this relationship they're like mai kar to raha hu but it's that he sent you a good morning text <laughs> to prove yes. his love for you papa was telling me to come to the office and i sent you a good morning text and then went for a shower yeah. and it's like okay babe <laughs> when when guys are like you know i'm not good at multitasking that is not because men are wired like that that's because you've never been pushed you've never had to think too you've thoughts. never had to be high functioning the no. minute you see a guy move out of his parents house and move into his own apartment watch him fly you think so flying like i'm but not like saying the house is nice said they'll send arm um. <laughs> they'll send arm um, but i'm saying he'll be thinking now in six different directions but then if if you move in with a partner then he won't fly <laughs> <laughs> then he's very this he's Justin. like an emu <laughs> he's a land animal <laughs> land, <laughs> land bird little short flights he'll be like oh uda uda nahi like a penguin <laughs> just waddling <laughs> like abhi uda abhi uda wow 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 and you're thinking ye abhi uda le gaya but i am land animal <laughs> Yeah, in Bollywood, it's an Imtiaz Ali film. Bani from ये जवानी है दिवानी. Irritating character, I must say, number one irritating character. When Deepika opened the door for him in the end, I was like, Maan, You called for this? This is your karma. You ne pucha the ko mil gaya, and I'm like, Fuck this topper, this topper. She was so good at everything she did. She's working a professional job because they don't give any more details after that. When she's falling for this guy, and she's like readjusting her life for this guy. Sick. Yeah, who has harem pants? Dude, harem pants are my new ick in general. Not new, but there are many. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> We were discussing this the other day. Nothing is more telling of a straight man's fashion than when you leave him alone on a bachelor trip in Bangkok, <laughs> and then these weird patterns come out. They're wearing like striped shorts with floral T-shirt and a fedora and loafers if they're going out at night and. like and they thought that that's peak male fashion <laughs> you know it's so good i feel like if you're a mountains person like if you're just you just know that your man dresses better in the cold yeah layers layers, <laughs> layers always make you look better yeah Layer, even if you're sweating just buy on amazon you get these like uh, sweat absorbing patches just put them in all your shorts and layer That's the best advice I can give you as a woman. You know what I want to know, and this is I feel for guys and girls. Whenever I meet my, most of the time when I meet my friend's partner, like nine times out of ten, I'm not very impressed. So I'm like, are people just settling across the board, or like, are our friends just bad at you serving know, themselves? You know, the fuck up is. We're all dating the same guy in different fonts, yeah, and that's why we don't like our friends' partners because we don't like our partners. <laughs> yeah, you sit with a group of your friends and you're like, actually, everyone's having the same problem. It's just that everyone's degrees of variation are varying. Then you're like, shit, are we supposed to break up? Like, what is the etiquette as society? Like, if you're unhappy and dissatisfied, should you stay, or should you leave? because all these other girls at the table on their fifth mimosa have already opened up about their life and been like ah he's a fucking he took all my best years he fucked me up he doesn't even respect my parents and you're like mm. my guy Girl, just doesn't same. fold him <laughs> my guy just doesn't fold his like clothes and put them in the closet actually you know i my feel winning like, <laughs> i feel like the first girl who opens up about problems yeah Is the champion because everyone's going through the same problems? Hundred percent. It's just that your, तुम्हारा पत्ता पहले कट रहा है. Yeah. Like you don't worry, babe. Like, dude, everyone, you you be the person who like says that you know actually I'm having an issue in my relationship, and everyone starts opening the top button of their jeans because you can breathe now. You can let your fucking <laughs> diaphragm relax. Secret. You're like, oh, was it just me? It's all of us. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, just. <laughs> Two feminists. 
Right. But the same thing happens with the guys also, right? Like the minute you like step out and you're ge- getting a drink and you're sitting back and you're just like, fuck man, she nagged me, she did this to me, she did that to me. And yeah, I feel like both genders speak Greek and then they're trying to talk to each other and it's not working. And you like stick it out, you find some fun things to do, you go on trips, you <laughs> like shit on other people together and that's love. <laughs> you know, actually... Yes. <laughs> When guys get in a room together, they actually talk about how they annoy their partners and they think it's funny. Mm. So they know exactly what they're doing wrong. So actually, men are the problem. This and when women is. get into a room together, they're talking about how they bait their partners to see how much he's learned. That's true. And then you're like, he didn't learn. <laughs> yeah. He didn't learn. And guess what? You're the idiot in that whole situation. <laughs> Bara, we fail. <laughs> yeah. You, you cannot bait your partner to try and teach them lessons. Yeah. Like, you either level up or just like accept your fear. Yeah. Rule number one of couples fight club <laughs> is you don't talk about couples fights. Isi ke saath hamara samay samaft What have we learned about moving on? <sighs> that it is an everyday thing, bro. It's an everyday hustle. You Just when you think you've like unlocked it, one feeling will come and give you one thappad from the side. It's over, yeah. I like how guys always do these rhymes. Like, you know, a shoulder to cry on is a dick to ride on and all of that I shit. I like, never heard this. What they always life. say that about guy best friends. No. Like, you know, like a guy will be like, oh, I'll be her shoulder to cry ah. on. And then it'll be her dick to ride on or whatever. And like, they, they have these very like, every goal has a goalkeeper. But like, you Trust still score me. types. If you rebound and you are sitting on feelings, Nine times out of ten, either at climax or post climax, you will cry. Right. You will I, feel that, so bad. And this is like boy, girl, anyone. Like it's it's not the strategy. No, it's not the strategy. I'm saying the strategy is to make catchy rhymes. <laughs> I feel like that works. The strategy is to make diss tracks. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just make a diss track about your ex. Yeah. <laughs> Expensive, perhaps. Dude, affect. I'm, Dude, if you make a diss track and you make your problems rhyme, you will feel so satisfied. Be like, I'm the fucking most gigantic genius on this planet. He left me with one text. I want to know who's next. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that that's better than whatever I was trying. It better be an email, or I'm gonna be the female that fucks him up. <laughs> he won't communicate after the breakup. I'll find I someone ate. else to date. <laughs> fuck <laughs> it up. Fuck it up. MC Nana. MC Mic drop. <laughs> so that was a very messy episode. Um, both of us are in shock right now. We don't know what we've created. Not as messy as most breakups. And if y'all have dealt with a messy breakup, y'all can deal with this one hour episode that is equally messy. And... Um, yeah, hope you're hope you're good. Hope you're great actually. Why good? <laughs> Why stop and good? And I'm just rambling like you've been rambling at your partner to change. Yeah. Neither of those things are going to happen. So we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>